This video is for Review Quiz 3.5. We're working on the seven-step strategy of graphing a rational function. Really, there's not much reason to uh, graph a function by hand. You can always use a graphing software, but um, analyzing the function is more what we're trying to learn from this. So the first part, it says, is to find the origin. Really, the first part we should do here is look at the function and ask, can we simplify it? Because that's going to make it easier to work with. Now, uh, on top and bottom, there's nothing we can cancel. We can factor the denominator, though. It's a difference of two squares, so we get x minus 1, x plus 1. And there's no common factors on top and bottom. So now we can move on to the next, next thing that they're asking here, which is, um, what's the symmetry? Symmetry is all about um, plugging in f of negative x. Oops. f of negative x, negative x equals 4 times negative x squared over negative x squared minus 1. And uh, the negative x squared is negative x times negative x. Negative cancels, so we get 4x squared over x squared minus 1. And this is just the function. This is the actual f of x function. So f of negative x equals f of x. That means this has y-axis symmetry. It's reflexive across the y-axis. So it's the same thing on, on the two halves. The, the left and the right half look the same, just, just kind of mirror images of each other, which is nice to know. OK, the next one says, what is the y-intercept? Well, that's quite easy to find. We just type, <clears throat> plug in f of 0. So we're going to plug 0 in for x, 0 squared minus 1. Of course, on top we get 0 over well, negative 1, that's just 0. So the y-intercept will be 0. OK, next one says, what is the x-intercepts? And then it happens from factoring and when the numerator equals 0. Well, 4x squared, um, let's see, 4x squared over x squared minus 1. You get zeros if the numerator equals zero, and it's not the same. Um, it's not the same factor as the denominator. So you have to factor first and cancel. That's when you you have to do that first, and then you can find the x-intercepts. This thing gives us zero when x equals zero. That's that's the only x-intercept we have there. You can divide it by four, then take a square root. It's all going to be just zero. Um, that's the only thing we can get. We can get. Okay, so we have x-intercept at zero. The vertical asymptotes are where the denominator equals 0. So this thing equals 0. This thing factors down into x minus 1, x plus 1, which gives us zeros of 1 and negative 1. Therefore, we have two vertical asymptotes. I need to make sure I'm typing this the right way. Because for this one, yeah. For this one, it says type an equation and um, the vertical asymptotes are always going to be x equal to 1 and x equal to negative 1. You have to type x equals because that is an equation in two dimensions as, as a vertical line. And a vertical asymptotes are just vertical lines. Okay, next portion is the horizontal asymptote. If you don't remember, there's three rules. We, you either have, uh, well, well, m is going to be the, de the degree on top. n is going to be the degree on bottom. And there's three, there's three cases that you can have. Um, if m is greater than m, if m equals n, and if m is less than n. If m is greater than n, that means the degree on top is greater than the degree on bottom. You do not have a horizontal asymptote, so no horizontal asymptotes. If m equals n, like we have here, you have to use the ratio of the leading coefficients. So a over b, a and b are the leading coefficients, a for the numerator, b for the denominator. And if m is less than n, we have y equal to 0. Our case is the middle one. The leading coefficient on top was only 1, just 4. And on bottom here, we have x squared minus 1. Leading coefficient is just going to be one because x squared is the leading is the degree term. So we get over one, which is equals four. So y equal to four, oops, y equal to four is the horizontal asymptote. You have to write y equal four. 
That's a horizontal line, which is a horizontal asymptote. Okay, we need to plug some points in. That's what this portion is. We're going to plug in 4, a negative 4, negative 3, negative 1 half, and so on. So let's plug in negative 4. We get 4 times negative 4 squared over negative 4 squared minus 1. Negative 4 squared is uh, 16 times 4 is 64. Negative 4 squared is 16, minus 1 is going to be 15. And this is 3 times 5 is a bunch of 2s, so no. No no way of simplifying that. 64 over 15. They want an integer or a simplified fraction, so that's why I'm writing it. That's why I'm doing this by hand. You could use a calculator, but it might just give you a decimal. Okay, we tried negative 3. 3 squared minus 1. Uh, negative 3 squared is going to be 9 times 4 is 36. Negative 3 squared is going to be 9 again, minus 1 is 8. This reduces down into, let's see, 18 and then 9 over 2, I believe. Because you can divide it by 2, it gives you 18, divide by 2 again, that'll give you, yeah, yeah, that's right. Okay f of negative one half we get four times negative one half squared over negative one half squared minus one um four times negative one half squared well negative one half squared is going to be negative or uh, positive one fourth negative one half times negative one half is one fourth on the bottom we have negative or sorry positive one fourth the, the negative cancels with the square and then minus one minus one is the same thing as minus four over four on top we have 1, on the bottom we have negative 3 over 4. And then we can divide or multiply by the reciprocal, giving us 1 times negative 4 over 3, or in other words, negative 4 over 3. So we get negative 4 over 3. Okay, 1 half, we actually don't need to calculate this because we have y-axis symmetry. That means negative x and positive x give us the same y value. And we already found what negative one-half is, so one-half is going to be the exact same thing. Four thirds. Three, same as negative three, nine halves. And four is the same thing as negative four, 64 fifteenths. You can, of course, plug them in and try it out. You're going to get the same thing. So there's no reason to do that. All right. A um, few things, we have um, asymptotes, we have y-intercept y of 0, x-intercept of 0, um, asymptotes at 1 and negative 1 for, uh, for vertical asymptotes, a horizontal one at 4, and then we have these values here. We have, um, you can see that we, that we had values on either side of the asymptotes, negative ones will be right here, positive one will be right here, and we have positive values to the left of the first asymptote, negative uh, values in between the two asymptotes and positive values to the right of the asymptotes. So I'm using that information. We're going to figure out which graph it is. Now this one here, you, you can immediately factor this one out because this one does not asymptote to these two values. It looks like it just crosses them, which is not, not correct. Also the y value is negative four, not positive four. So that one's not, definitely not it. The same thing is true for this one. There's no, no vertical asymptotes here. Y value is at 4, the, the horizontal one's there, but the, there should be vertical asymptotes. So we're looking at C and D. This one we can immediately rule out because we have vertical asymptotes that are correct, but we have negative 4 for, for a horizontal asymptote. And this one here must be correct. Negative 1, negative, or positive 1, those are vertical asymptotes. We have Y equal to 4 is a horizontal. It's positive on this side, positive on this side, and negative between the two, which is what we have. And we can see here that y and x-intercept of 0 is right there. So that's what we're looking for is d. That's correct. OK, next one. Very similar. We're, we're going to be doing the same types of stuff. Um, the first thing we did in the previous one was we factored it to simplify. We have x minus 6 over x squared minus 36. This one we can factor, the top can't, but the bottom is a difference of two squares, x plus 6 and x minus 6. And here you can see, well, 
those cancel. So we get 1 over x plus 6. Of course, before we can cancel it, we have to note that x cannot equal negative 6 or positive 6 because positive 6 would give us a 0 in the original, in this, in this given function here. Um, positive 6 would not work. And negative 6 actually is a vertical asymptote. So this is the function we'll use. Um, it'll be easier to use in, in these questions. Um, but keep in mind um, 6 and negative 6 just for reference. Okay, first one is still going to be um, symmetry. Well, our new, our new function is this one. I'm plug in negative 6 and negative x into there. And we get negative x plus 6. We can divide out that negative to give us uh, a negative 1 over negative or x minus 6. It's not the same. There's, there's no, nothing we can do to make this the same. So there's no symmetry there. Y-intercept is when the numerator equals 1. Well, this is our, this is our function here, right? This is our new uh, simplified function. And when is the numerator equal to 1? Well, or sorry, is 0? It's never equal to 0. It, it's, it's always equal to 1. So there are no y-intercepts for this function. X-intercept is when the denominator equals 1. Well, x plus 6 is the denominator. So negative 6 is the x-intercept. Uh, I'm sorry, no, that, that, that's incorrect. Um, I gotta go back a second. Uh, Y-intercept is when you plug in zero. What I just found for the Y-intercept was for the X-intercept. The X-intercept is when the numerator equals zero, which you can't. The Y-intercept is when you just plug in F of zero. And you get one over zero plus six, which of course is just one six. So that's the Y-intercept. What I found for the y-intercept was for the x-intercept. Now, what I, was, what I was trying to find was the vertical asymptote. That's when the denominator equals 0. And the denominator equals 0 when x equals negative 6. So we have a single vertical asymptote. Um, and there are holes because we also um, cannot have positive 6. But positive 6 was removed. So it's a removable discontinuity or a hole in the graph. Uh, as a vertical asymptote, and it, this one's, a, one's a, um, an equation, so it has to be x equal to negative 6. And it has a hole at x equal to positive 6. That's the one that we removed from it uh, when we canceled it. And then the one that remains is a, is a vertical asymptote. The ones that we remove are holes. Uh, okay, I think that one is good. Now it says find the horizontal asymptote. Horizontal asymptote, I told you, was the those three three things. The, the degree on top is one. The degree on bottom is is two. The same thing is true here. The degree on top is zero. The degree on bottom is one. Um, either way you look at it, uh, the top is less than the bottom. Therefore, we have a horizontal asymptote at y equal to zero. Make sure you write y equal to zero. It's a line. All right, now we can test some values. We don't have to test it in here. We can actually just test it onto this function here that we have, the simplified one. So let's do that. Oops. Do f of x equals 1 over x plus 6. Of course, x cannot equal positive 6, but none of these are positive 6, so we're good to go there. All right. Try negative 9, it's going to be 1 over negative 9 plus 6, which of course is 1 over negative 3. Negative 8 is 1 over negative 8 plus 6, so 1 over negative 2. 5 is going to be um, just plus 6, so 5 plus 6 is 11. 7 plus 6, well that's going to be... I, I really don't even need to, need to write this out. It's uh, pretty easy to do by head, in your head. Uh, negative one third, get negative one half, one over 11. Then we have one over x plus six, so seven plus six is 13, one over 13, and then one over eight plus six is 14. All right, so we're gonna keep in mind the asymptotes uh, or there's, there's actually, yeah, the horizontal asymptote of y equal to 0. And then the vertical asymptote of y equal to negative 6. So keep in mind those two things as we look for the graph. We also have 
no x intercept, so it's never going to cross the x axis. And there's no, uh, the y intercept is 1 6th. So we're going to keep those in mind. No symmetry. So let's figure out which one it is. Um, this has a y equal to 0 and a vertical asymptote of y equal to negative 3. But our vertical asymptote was positive, or no, negative 6. See, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 13, 14, 16, 18, 20. Yeah, so these, these are in steps of 2. So this is y equal to negative 6, and this is y equal to 0. We have a hole here at positive 6. So that's this one looks to be um, somewhat accurate. Let's see. On the, the asymptotes right here at negative 6, so we have negative on that side and positive on this side. Negative on this side, positive on this side. That one looks to be correct. I'm, I'm going to select it, but I'll, I'll check the rest of them. This one's not correct. It has the flipped values. Um, we should have x equal to negative 6 as a vertical asymptote, and that has x equal to positive 6, so that one can't be it. C, uh, negative 6, 0, but it crosses the x-axis, and we said there were no, there's no x-intercepts here, so it should not cross the x-axis, and this one does right here. So this one can't be correct. And finally, D, once again, it crosses the x-axis, so no. A has to be correct. Let's check. And that's all correct. Okay, moving on to the last problem. Uh, let's write down this, this function here. Not that we really need to since it's just written there, but... X minus 2. We're looking for the slant asymptote. And we know there is a slant asymptote here because the degree on top, which is 2, is bigger than the degree on bottom, which is 1. To find the slant asymptote, you just use the division. You don't have to use long division, but um, it's pretty simple to find this since the numbers are so small here. Um, I'm going to. Uh, first off, you take x squared and then divide it by x, since we're taking the first two numbers, x squared divided by x. That gives you x, x on top, distributed through, and you get x squared minus 2x, subtract 0 plus 3x, bring on the next term, and then divide again. So 3x divided by x, 3x divided by x gives us 3. And we actually don't need to continue here because uh, it, after we do all this, um, this division distributed through, we're, we're not going to have anything else to divide by. And this is a line, x plus 3. y equals x plus 3 is, is a linear equation, and that's a slant asymptote. And that is our equation that we're going to be having for the slant asymptote. We don't care about the remainder. It's not a part of the, the slant asymptote. Only the division, the, um, the dividend, is the um, slant asymptote. So continuing, um, you can see that we can't factor anything on the top and bottom. We, we can factor the numerator, I believe, to x plus 2, let's see, x minus 1 over x minus 2, right, negative 2 plus, yeah. Nothing cancels, so um, this is the best we got. So now let's look at symmetry. Um, I'm going to use this, this function here um, for symmetry. I think it's going to be easier to plug in the, not the um, factored form. All right, negative x squared plus negative x minus 2 over negative x minus 2. x squared, uh, negative x squared, the negative cancels with itself. And then we get minus x minus 2 over, this is x squared, minus x minus 2. Of course, that gives us over x plus 2 with a negative out in front. And nothing we can do here is going to make it the same thing. So there is no symmetry here. Try it out. Try try dividing out different negatives. Try moving things around. Try multiplying through by negatives and everything. You're, you're not going to be able to make anything valid to look like f of x. So that's the best we can do. Moving on to the y-intercept. Y-intercept is when we plug in f of x equal to 0. Sorry, f of 0. f of x equal to 0 is the x-intercept. f of 0 is the y-intercept. We get 0 squared plus 0 minus 2 over 0 minus 2, 
Well, it's just going to be minus 2 over minus 2, which equals 1. So the y-intercept is 1. Okay, x-intercepts is when the numerator equals 0. Well, that we factored into this. The numerator equals 0 when x equals negative 2 or positive 1. So we have two x-intercepts. Negative 2 and positive 1. Vertical asymptotes are when the denominator equals 0, and that happens when x equals positive 2. And this again is an equation, not an asymptote, or not a, um, not just a number. It's going to be x equal to 2. That's a one dimension or a two dimensional equation that's a vertical line. So make sure you write it as x equal to 2, just like the slant asymptote was written as, an, as a line y equals mx plus b, y equals um, 1x plus 3. All right, um, there is no horizontal asymptote. There's a slant asymptote, not a horizontal. It, it, you can't have one of each. So um, it's, there's no horizontal asymptote there. And once again, it wants us to plug in some numbers here. Let's go ahead and try that out. Uh, f of negative 4 is going to be negative 4 squared. It's negative 4 minus 2 over negative 4 minus 2. Um, negative 4 squared is 16 minus 4 minus 2 over negative 6. So we get 10 over negative 6. I think that's correct. Gives us negative 5 thirds. Negative 5 thirds. Okay, negative 3. Um, really, all I'm doing here, I can just remove this stuff and then just write in negative 3 here. Negative 3 squared is 9, minus 3, minus 2 over negative 3 minus 2 is negative 5. That's going to give us um, 9 minus 3 is 6, minus 2 is 4. 4 over negative 5, or negative 4 fifths. OK, let's plug in negative 1. We get 1 minus 1 minus 2 over minus 3. It's going to be minus 3 minus 1, so negative 2 over negative 3. That's going to be just 2 thirds. All right. Five halves. 5 halves squared is going to be 25 fourths plus 5 halves. That's the same thing as multiplying by 2 over 2. Uh, 10 fourths. And then there's negative 2 over 1 multiplied by 4 over 4 gives us negative 8 fourths. I'm just trying to get common denominators all at the same time just to save some time. Uh, 2 over 1 multiplied by 2 over 2 that gives us 4 over 2. Now I can subtract. 25 plus 10 is 35, minus 8 is 27 over um, 4, and then 1 over 2 on bottom. Multiply by the reciprocal. 27 over 2. Let me just check, make sure I didn't do any error there. 35, 27, 4. I think that's correct. Okay, last one is 5. Just plugging 5 into here. Five squared is twenty-five plus five minus two over three. Thirty minus two is twenty-eight over three. And that cannot simplify. So 28 over 3 
All right, uh, we have a single vertical asymptote at two, which would be right, let's see, this is 2.5, so it'd be right here. It's gonna be, uh, let's see. Oh, oh, there's also X intercepts. So negative two and one. Negative two is gonna be negative on that side, positive between this one and the vertical asymptote of two. Let's see. One, two, one. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Negative on this side, positive in between the two intercepts, and then it's gonna be positive after the um, asymptote. We also have a horizontal, no, a slant asymptote at y equal to x plus three and a y-intercept of 1. So we have to, do, we have to keep this information in mind when we're looking at these graphs. Let me actually write down the y-intercept of 1, x-intercepts at negative 2 and 1, um, asymptote at y equal to, or sorry, x equal to 2, and then y equals x plus 3. That's the slant asymptote. So let's look at the graph here. This is not the, the x plus three um, slant asymptote. This is actually gonna be probably a negative x plus three, I'm guessing. So this one's incorrect. This one looks like it has the correct asymptote there. The horizontal asymptote should be at x equal to two though. And this is at zero. Let me uh, see if I made a mistake here. Zero. That one's at two. And that one's also at two. So yeah, this, this one can't be correct because the horizontal or the vertical asymptote is at uh, zero. It's gotta be C or D. This one looks to have the correct um, slant asymptote, the correct vertical asymptote. And if we could zoom in on this, I don't think I can. Um, we can see that we have negative two and one. I think those are correct here. Negative two and one for the X intercepts y-intercept of one looks like it's correct. It's really hard to see because you can't zoom in here. But it looks like C could be good. And we, it can't be D because this, this um, slant asymptote is going the wrong direction. It should go um, upward as you go left to right because the slope is positive. So this looks like, again, this, this, this looks like negative x minus three is, is my guess for that. So I think C is correct. Let's see if we made any mistakes. Nope, everything is correct.